how well this is going to show up on the camera. But there's some huge fish down here. We don't know what they are. I remember seeing them at most point. I think they Looks like they're used to being fed, too. Yeah. So, oh, wow. We'll find out. We'll get the answer to that. Here's our catamaran. All right, so we're aboard our catamaran. We're in Roadtown, Whitkin K. And Fiona is going to come by us about 2 o'clock this afternoon. So in a couple of hours. And it's supposed to become a hurricane when it gets, I think, past the Dominican Republic. So we'll be on the boat tonight. And then tomorrow sometime, hopefully Fiona's far enough away and the weather is conducive to taking off so we can start our island hopping. But we've got all our provisions. We think we're ready we have our beer so that we're ready to go. So Vicky is making breakfast, our first meal. Anything special about today, Victoria, that you uh, want to share with our it is viewers? Your birthday. It's what? Your birthday. No way. Yeah. 28. Yes. Oh man, I never thought I would get there. But uh, <laughs> So, chorizo. Chorizo and eggs. Mm -hmm. And you want a toasty, sir? Sure, thanks. Not bad right now. My birthday breakfast. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Happy birthday. Chorizo and eggs. Why do you have such a small portion and no bread? <laughs> I didn't want bread. Mm, well, okay, I'm going to eat. This tree so is spicy but really tasty. And the package came in really good. Five different languages. So we actually we still needed some provisioning. And at the marina they have a French deli. They had a ton of interesting stuff in there. We got this chorizo from there. And it is the spiciest, really the tastiest chorizo I've ever eaten. And I really like chorizo and eggs. Saturday, the day that we boarded the boat, is when Fiona was supposed to get closest to us about 100 miles south, and it never really got that bad. Winds, I think, were predicted in the 30 knot range and some heavy rain. Now, on Sunday, when I shot this uh, clip that unfortunately the audio didn't come out very well, uh, predict wind again was saying around 30 something knots, and we did get a little bit of heavy rain, but the conditions never got that bad and we weren't allowed to leave the marina, not because of the weather, they said that was up to the captain as to whether or not they left that day, but they did not have our cruising permit and we're still trying to obtain that. So we made the best of it and uh, we got out the next day on Monday after Sunsail was able to obtain that cruising permit and we got different reasons as to why they didn't get it on time. Water's dripping from right there. Right there. You have it the second one? Yeah. I see a bigger leak right here. Is this one bigger? Oh yeah. It's dropping from three different places. All right. Happy birthday, it's a you, truck. You're not gonna sing? Oh. Alright. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. We are taking off finally. <laughs> we are on the road. Going to our first destination, Norman Island. Hurricane Fiona has passed. It's gotten a little calmer. Still looks a little rocky, but definitely was more rocky as it was passing yesterday. So just some remnants right now, but it's a lot better. How you doing? Hi. I think I actually think it's smooth. Yeah. Or we can find Peter right here. I think that would be smooth. 
that's making a lot of noise right there. Don't see me. Where are we going? Norman, the bike, right? So, we should be there in about an hour. We just left Roadtown, finally got to take the boat out. The swells are about four and a half plus feet. Not bad, but it's just kind of a confused sea. They're not really defined swells. It's kind of like a washing machine. Uh, we definitely encountered bigger swells going to and from Catalina for sure. But uh, it should be there in an hour or less. I didn't set up a camera for the mooring to capture that. So, but we're at Norman Island, the bight. And it was pretty uneventful. It took us two attempts. Not bad for, you know, we haven't operated a catamaran in several years. And look at this woman. <laughs> I want to be her. It's just like the life. So there are one, two, three sailboats kind of far away and then, us. and then us. So there are four in here. I wouldn't even venture to guess how many mooring balls are in here. There's a ton. And behind us is the famous infamous Willie T, which is a bar if you're not familiar with it. And uh, people jump off a la nude. Topless Just topless. There's the Willie T. It's closed, as are a lot of things in September hurricane season. And this is very close to Wickham K. It's only about six nautical miles. So we got here in about an hour. Is there a drink, madam? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have done a tour at the beginning before we dirtied everything up but uh, so this is the stern area with a nice table and here is the helm that's the lift the davit for the dinghy and I'll show you later, but it was missing a plug on the back, a plug that's threaded on. And we took in a lot of water. And I was wondering why it was taking it so long to plane, but in, it lifted and want to lift it up. So we noticed that that was missing. We drained that water out. And then I used, there was some wooden, uh, plugs in the nav table and I use one of those and it seems to have stopped the intake of water on the dinghy. So we'll go in the salon and Miss Vicky's cooking lunch and uh, I made some mango daiquiris. Miss Vicky's reading a book. What book are you reading Miss Vicky? Brought by um, Stephen King. And 112263. It's almost a thousand pages, right? It's um, 800. You bought that at the airport? Mm -hmm. So she's almost done. She's a voracious reader, <laughs> unlike myself. I'm, I'm more of a kind of a comic book reader kind of guy. So this is the salon, and you know, all these tables always go down. You can make another berth out of it. 
We've got a couple of life jackets up and ready, should we need them. And this is where we've been watching movies on Netflix at night. It's actually pretty comfortable. So we take the table down and put some sheets and stuff on and watch one on our laptop. That TV worked while we were at the dock and we were able to stream Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, but it doesn't work out here. So this is the galley. And from the leopard that we were on, you know, 11 years ago, I, I think this stove and oven are actually upgrade from what it was before. Remember we had some trouble with it. So this is the starboard berths down here. And this is the head with a shower. And it's got a sump pump down here for the shower. The difference between the one that we were on before, oddly, is in this boat supposed to be a little longer. It's called a 40, but it's not actually 40 feet. It's called a 404, but I still think it's like 38. We were on a 38 before, and they actually had a shower door, so the shower was completely separate, and you didn't get water everywhere. It's not a big deal, but it's interesting that they changed that. So this is the bow V-berth on the starboard side we're just using <laughs> okay yeah unmentionables there so just luggage and whatever and then the aft which is the bigger one this is where we're sleeping and actually it's pretty comfortable the mattresses are more comfortable than the ones that we have on our boat uh, ours are a little stiff and you do have a fan back here and we have a generator and you can run the air conditioner and it will get the temperature down as low as you want it i mean you can get it down to the high 60s we haven't been running the generator for the air conditioner at night we've just been you know using the fans it can get a little hot at night but i don't really want to run a generator all night and normally the places that we've always gone generators are supposed to be off by nine o'clock this is the nav table and it's it's a mess it's got my camera gear and all these cords we don't have an inverter on this boat but we do have dc so we're able to charge with these usb ports and the panel over here it's strange to me that you would have a generator all these outlets and not have an inverter i don't understand what the logic was on that but that's the case this up here is the generator this is the stuff for shore power and we don't have the air conditioner on but this is the controls for the port and starboard air conditioner and they blow some crazy cold air so they're really effective and then out on the bow got a mess <laughs> all the swimsuits drying towels drying we've got a couple of paddle boards so that's basically the boat i didn't show you the port side versa just like the starboard side and there's also a head on the there's also a head on the port side as well, so there's two heads. And they are electric flush heads, and they sound like a Japsco macerator. They sound like our boat, but not quite as loud. So that's the boat. What do you think, Vicki? I like it. I mean, it's more than... We've got plenty of room, huh? Plenty of room. Particularly for the two of us. Yeah. Um, and the one difference between the Leopard that we had you know, over a decade ago, that was a 38, is that you did not have this door leading to the bow. And that's pretty cool. So we definitely use this a lot. And other than that, it's basically the same. We didn't have a generator on that boat either. So last night we ran the air conditioner for a couple of hours and watched a movie and then turned it off about eight o'clock. So we went to sleep without. Yeah, it stayed cool for a while. But that's kind of that's kind of the boat. Sorry we uh, did the tour after our stuff is 
all over the place. But how beautiful is this? We're headed over to the Norman Caves, and the Norman Island has a pretty neat history. Uh, some historical fact and some legend unknown whether or not it's true or not. But uh, it's said to be the inspiration for Louis Stevenson's novel Treasure Island. But for sure, in 1750, a Spanish treasure galleon uh, had a mutiny and about 55 chests of silver coins were taken in that mutiny and Owen Lloyd ended up on the island and buried some of that treasure and he eventually got arrested and the treasure was recovered some by just uh, treasure seekers from nearby island of Tortola and some by the lieutenant governor of the Leeward Islands and a group of soldiers they recovered some of the booty as well. So, uh, so pretty neat history. There's also a legend that long, long time ago, a fisherman encountered some bad weather and sought safety inside one of the caves spent the night in the cave with his boat that bounced around up against the rocks and dislodged some silver into his boat. He found a lot of booty inside the cave, became a rich landowner and business owner in the BVI. But truth, fiction, I don't know, but a great story anyway. We're headed over to the beach now, and the beach was completely deserted. In fact, the, when we first got to Norman Bay, there were four boats, and there were times that we were the only boat inside the bay. And you see right there, there's another dinghy there, and that's actually the person who collects the mooring fees, so that's an employee. And we did see a couple of other employees working on the restaurant, which is closed, but they were doing some woodwork. So we had the beach to ourselves and actually we had the island to ourselves, the whole bay to ourselves uh, for most of the time that we were there.